Nerds, it's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today I want to do a little analysis of the current Nurgle list that I have been running, and I'm going to be taking to the Atlantic City Open in a couple of weeks. So let's take a look at what we have in the basics of the list. We are Allegiance Nurgle, our host is the Munificent Wanderers, our realm is Gyran. Uh, no real... Uh, rules reason for the realm uh, that's just how my army is themed uh, around Gyran so um, just sort of fitting there uh, for leaders we've got a great unclean one for our general he has the bile blade and doomsday bell so he can get buffs to cast and he's giving everyone within seven inches plus three movement his command trait is One Last Gift, that is from the Munificent Wanderer's host. Uh, so all units wholly within 12 inches of him. Um, when an enemy unit rolls a 6 to hit a, to attack those units, um, they do a mortal wound back after all uh, attacks have been resolved. Uh, his artifact is the Endless Gift, so this does a lot of healing. You roll... In the battle shock phase, 1d6 for each damage that he's taken during that turn, and every 4-up heals a wound. Uh, and then we've got Lore of Virulence, Glorious Afflictions for his spell. Uh, that is 21-inch range, and it does half to run, move, and charge rolls for uh, an enemy unit. Then I've got two Sloppity Bile Pipers. One of them has the Muck Talon, which is just plus one to hit against heroes. That's the uh, artifact from the Munificent Wanderers. Then I've got 30 Plague Bearers, 30 Plague Bearers, 10 Plague Bearers, 10 Plague Bearers, 3 Plague Drones, 3 Plague Drones, and a Tally Band of Nurgle. And for those unfamiliar, the Tally Band of Nurgle, basically what it does is it heals one wound to each unit in your hero phase and restores D3 Plague Bearers to each Plague Bearer unit in the battalion. Uh, Sloppity Bile Piper, I've gone over ad nauseum what he does. He's really good. Uh, plague Drones, generally just sort of your hammer unit. Plague Bearers are your battle line. So just at the outset, before I get too deeply into this, um, we do have the Great Unclean One, who is a behemoth and a monster. So for scenarios that require that for bonus points, we do have one of those. We've got three leaders and two artifacts for scenarios that care about those. And four battle line units for the scenarios that care about those. Two of them being very, very survivable. Altogether, we come out to 1980 for points, so a decent chance that we'll be able to get a triumph, and we get an extra command point. We've come up to a total of 136 wounds, which is a little bit above average, but our guys in general are going to be pretty durable, so that is a plus. Um, not the ridiculous wound count that we get when we're running our... Uh, Putrid Blight Kings, but this is, I think, a very resilient list on its own, and we're going to go more into why and how. So everything fits inside the Taliban of Nurgle, so this is a one-drop list. The Great Unclean One is really the central piece to how the army functions, and that is why I put the Endless Gift on him, so that he would be able to heal and hopefully last uh, as long as possible throughout the game. So far, the only thing that's really been able to take him out is uh, an Argonaut Ironclad. Um, that's happened twice now. Um, <laughs> but uh, in general, he is going to be really powerful. So he's going to give you an extra three inches of movement for everybody that's within seven. And he has that aura of 12 inches doing immortal wounds to attackers when they roll sixes to hit um so in general what i try and do is keep both of my 30 blocks of plague bearers within 12 inches of him 
So they're constantly getting that aura buff, and they're also getting the plus three movement. Um, in addition to that, his command ability is uh, plus one to attack. So that can help push the plague bearers up into more of an offensive role. It can also really make your plague drones that much more of a hammer. Uh, Sloppity Bile Pipers, they're providing really strong buffs. They generally, um, I'll usually have one following my drones around, if not one following each group of drones around, depending on how I deploy. Um, usually try and keep them wholly within 14 of my big blocks of Plague Bearers, although that's not really always necessary. Um, frequently going to be using his Mortals on 6s to hit, or his plus one attack, but his uh, fart ability to uh, prevent enemy pylons is extremely strong. Um, last weekend, uh, I played in a local tournament and was able to, basically, I got charged by a bunch of plague monks. They just barely made the charge, so only a handful of them were... Um, close enough to make attacks on my plague drones. Sloppity Bile Piper was in range. He farted. The plague monks couldn't get in. And long story short, after a couple of rounds of combat, my plague drones took out 40 plague bear, um, plague, yeah, uh, not plague bearers, plague monks. Too many plague things. Anyway, um, so far I've had a lot of instances of that being extremely powerful. Um, it's a really good defensive tool, and really, it also can be an offensive tool, like I just mentioned with the Plague Monks. They they charged me in response. I fart. They can't pile in. They only get a couple of attacks in. I only take a couple of wounds. Then I'm able to pile in and put all of my attacks into them. And then on the next turn, I can either buff them further or I can use the fart again to prevent their pile-in so that they're still limited on the number of attacks they can get in. And um, also, it can um, give me more opportunity to have more survivability. So, what else do we have in the list? My groups of 30 Plague Bearers, they're basically the guys that are going to be holding important objectives. Um, very frequently, I'm going to have these guys right near my Great Unclean one, my Sloppy Bile Piper. Um, with some buffs, they can become reasonably offensive if we go uh, plus one to attack from the Great Unclean one and Mortal Wounds doing sixes, or Mortal Wounds on sixes to hit from Sloppity Bile Piper. Um, they can do a decent amount of damage. Not crazy. Um, always remember, too, that you can summon in a Spoilpox Scrivener to get them extra attacks. That is something I've been doing quite a bit. Um, in those key moments, you can just drop the Spoilpox Scrivener in and uh, use his abilities as well because those activate in the combat phase. Um, the groups of 10 Plague Bearers, they basically babysit objectives or hold on to the less important objectives that are in uh, a scenario. Um, they're basically screens or chaff a lot of the time. Um, and then my Plague Drones, they're really just my hammer unit. I'm going to usually put them on the flanks, either both on one side or one on each side. And... They're very much about, like, the counterpunch. I'm not looking to alpha strike with them. I'm On the first turn, I'm going to be advancing them a little bit just to kind of get in good range. When the opponent moves up, that's when I will go after them with the plague drones in return. Um, so how does this all work together, work out? So what ends up happening is the... Two blocks of 30 Plague Bearers and the Great Unclean one usually form a really strong center. And they're very prickly. They can do a lot of damage back to your opponent. They're very hard to kill. 
Taliban is healing the great unclean one and returning models to the plague bearers. So they're very hard for your opponent to whittle down. The Munificent Wanderers is also reducing all rend by one, so they're blunting enemy attacks. Um, they have the five up Disgusting Resilience throughout the entire army, so we have a lot of protection against attacks. So um, things like rend in general are not as effective, and we have protection against mortal wounds. Uh, the Plague Drones and the groups of ten Plague Bearers, they tend to go out on the flanks or all wait to one side of the board, depending on the scenario and the board setup. Um, they do tend to kind of go together. Usually I'll put like one group of plague bearers and one group of plague drones, uh, on one side and then the other two units on the other side or put all four of them together. Um, the plague bearers can sort of act as a screen for the drones, uh, because the drones fly, they can just jump right over, um, they also, the drones can just sort of clear a path to let the plague bearers more easily capture objectives. You know, we don't have a large quantity of units in this army that are good at capturing objectives. Really, you have like the two big blocks of 30 plague bearers that are going to be doing the majority of the work for you. So you have to get what you can out of the drones in the groups of 10 plague bearers. You really need the drones to push enemies off of objectives and the plague bearers to hold on to them as the drones advance. Um, as far as like placement of the sloppity bile pipers, usually I'll either, if I'm running this with plague drones on each flank, I'll usually pair up sloppity bile pipers with them and keeping them close enough in so that they're also going to affect the two groups of plague bearers to try and kind of get everything within these holy within bubbles um, and try and keep them within seven inches of the drones so they get the plus one attack from that. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in this list and how it plays. There's a few different ways to deploy um, you can certainly also slow roll your opponent on deployment because you're a one drop. You have a lot of control and you can sort of see what your opponent's going to do ahead of time. If you slow roll it and then, uh, and by that, I mean dropping one unit at a time until you get to your opponent's last drop and then you drop the rest of your army and you still get to choose to go first or second. Most of the time you want to go first you need to be really aggressive with the plague bearers and their movement to get them up onto objectives in the first turn. Um, alternatively, in some scenarios, you may want to get um, the plague bearers just up into the center and really make that a focal point for your opponent and make it a big area for them to try and get around to get to other objectives. Um, so that is certainly one way that you can play it. Um, I rarely will choose to go second in the first battle round. Um, I haven't really found a reason to do it yet, other than if I'm looking at my opponent and there's like just no way that they're going to be able to get on objectives in the first turn, then maybe I'll give the turn away and hope for the double into the second battle round. Um, for a scenario like Star Strike, I could think of doing that. Um, although Star Strike, you also have pretty good reason to want to be up in the middle as quickly as possible as well. So it's sort of a mixed bag. You have to make decisions on the fly. Um, and it's going to depend on what your opponent looks like, too. Uh, so I think that's about it. That's sort of the basics of the list that I'm running in some of the general strategy. Um, as I said, with the Endless Gift, uh, your Great Unclean One tends to not die. And that's uh, very good for you, obviously. Uh, avoid getting him into combat. Um, even when he does get into combat, he tends to survive pretty well with the Endless Gift. And uh, all of the other abilities on him tend to whittle down the opponent pretty quickly um 
and certainly win the attrition war over for now. Um, for all of you going to Atlantic City Open, I hope to see you there. Uh, this is a little preview, I guess, of uh, what I'm going to be running, so you uh, can strategize accordingly if you uh, think that I am a threat. And uh, that's going to be it for now. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications, support us on Patreon, and come chat with us on Facebook and Twitter. Links down below for all of those things. And I'll talk to you all later.